How we doing? Uh, I want to be talking about uh, a couple more concerts today. Let's go back to 1989. Uh, how many out there? If you ra raise your hand, if you remember 1989, uh, it was a wild time for me. It was a great time. Uh, a lot of stuff going on, uh, and so I went through a transition early on that year, and it, it was I was experiencing different things. But anyway, one of the things that I started experiencing was one of my favorite bands. Uh, my first, uh, probably my first. Uh, it's kind of a toss up between him and one other guy, but uh, Tom Kiefer for Cinderella. Man, I, I, I was a huge fan because he was such a, he's such a great singer and guitar player. And anyway, I've seen Cinderella several times, but uh, this was probably, I'm thinking this was the first time I ever saw him live. Uh, and they were great. Uh, anyway, 1989, I think it was around June of 89. Uh, there was three other people with me, so if you don't remember, I don't remember exactly the date. I got the, I could still have the, the stub. I still have the ticket stub. But they were going to be again, yet again, at the Mid-South Coliseum, Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, they also, they had uh, the Bullet Boys and Winger was opening for them. And, uh, of course, a friend of mine, Johnny Holland, uh, he worked at Album Alley, and he, you know, he got us tickets. Uh, it's like we were on like the 14th row. I mean, we were we were we were right there, you know. And I thought that was a great thing at the time. But anyway, me and Johnny, uh, a girl named Liz, and a good friend of mine, uh, Cindy Sable, at the time she's Cindy Davis now. We all loaded up and headed out, and. Uh, we went to see them at the Mid-South Coliseum. We got in there, and I'm talking about, the Bullet Boys come out, and the only the only song that I really knew of theirs at the time was what was playing on MTV, and it was, uh, that's back when MTV actually used to play music. I, I don't know if y'all know that or not. Uh, depends on how old you are, but anyway, uh, they had the song Smooth Up In You, and uh, uh, they come out with Money, Money, Money later on, but I think that was later on. But anyway, uh, they come out, and hey, they were good. They were pretty good. I kind of liked their guitar player. He was kind of cool. He wasn't nothing exceptional as far as to remember of that, but he, you know, he, you know, had, they had a cool vibe. The, the Bullet Boy singer, he was full of attitude, you know, uh, which I think later on got him in some trouble. But anyway, I'll talk about that maybe some other time. But they were pretty good. Uh, they were... They weren't that loud. I mean, they were they were pretty good. Well, I was kind of dreading Winger because <sighs> Kip Winger, you know, the ladies guy and all the, the teenage girls, you know, they love Kip Winger. And, you know, and he was this Mr. Dance and all this. He could do the pirouettes and, the, you know, the spinning and all. But, you know, of course, you forget about Kip Winger, too, because, you know, Kip Winger... If I'm not mistaken, played bass for Alice Cooper at one time. Somebody correct me on that if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure he even played for Alice Cooper at one time. But anyway, anyway, Winger was really good, man. They come out, they were jamming it. She's only 17 and some of the other. I mean, they, it was really good. I mean, they put on a heck of a show. It was good. I was impressed with them. I, I was way more impressed with them. And of course, their guitar player, come on now. You know, I mean, uh, uh, was it Rib Beach? I mean, he, I mean, he was killer guitar player. And if I'm wrong on the guitar player, forgive me and correct me in the comments. But they were good. They were good. They were really good. But let me tell you something. Cinderella. Uh, when they opened up, it was like they took the volume of the concert and went from about six to about eight, just like that. And uh, they was loud, and it it sounded great, man. I'm talking about 
it sounded great. Of course, Tom Kiefer's full of swagger, and you know, you got, they were the first guitar players, uh, as Jeff Labar and Eric Brittingham was the bass player. They were the first guitar players that I really paid attention to on MTV that actually spun their guitars, you know. So uh, I think they've done it in the Shake Me video. But anyway, man, I'm talking about, they was jamming, and we were right there on the 14th row. Then, every time Tom changed guitars, every time he swapped guitars, my gosh, man, it was so freaking loud. I was like, dang, man, I can't believe this. But it was great. Man, we, we loved it. I mean, it was really good. So the concert's over, and we're headed home. Of course, it's, like I said, it's me, Johnny, Liz, and Cindy. We go out. I don't really notice it as we're leaving, as we're leaving the Coliseum. But because you can, well, I guess I did. It's, it was usually a long walk. But they had two huge parking lots out there. And uh, I was noticing everything was kind of sounding funny. Well, we get in the car. And when anybody talked, now this was me, I think it was that way with the others too. Every, anytime I talked, it was like they sounded like Mickey Mouse. It, it was like they sounded like this when they talked. It was, like, it was really weird. And I was like, what in the world is going on? And it was from the music being so loud. And uh, I've only had one, I've only been to like one other concert where my hearing was affected by how loud it was. And uh, it was uh, Jackal. I saw Jackal at the New Daisy in Memphis, uh, the New Daisy Theater in Memphis back years ago. And my ears after that show rung for at least two weeks. Now my ears didn't really ring after Cinderella, but it was like they had just been, my eardrums had been numbed and everything sounded like this. Of course, after the next day or so, everything started sounding normal again, but I was like, wow, man, that was, and it was a great concert. So then September, I think it was September the 12th of that same year, me and another friend of mine, Billy Ray Sneed, we get tickets to see Cinderella again the same year down at, I believe it's Humphrey Coliseum at Starville down at Mississippi State. Go Bulldogs. And uh, it was, uh, he had uh, Tangier and White Line opening for him. And, uh, Man, we went down there, and it was a packed house, and it was great. I mean, it was great again. It was really, Tangier, uh, they were okay. They were okay. I mean, they sounded good. The singer was kind of one of those walk-around guys. But now, White Line, they were great. Man, they kicked it. Uh, Vito Brada and all that. I mean, they, they were really good, man. They kicked it. Uh, they were really good. But Cinderella, man, nobody could ever hold a candle to Cinderella. When Cinderella come out, man, they just dominated the stage. They were just so good. Uh, had a good sound. Whoever their sound technicians and whoever their guitar technicians, man, uh, they were premium because they were really good. Now, I've been to some shows of recent that had some of the best sounding PA systems I've ever heard in my life. So if you compare, look, I'm talking about how many years ago? I'm talking about, what, 20... Uh, thir I mean, uh, I'm talking about like 30, what, three years ago? 33 years ago, and they sounded that good, that loud, that clear. Uh, that's pretty impressive back then as to much as it is now because of the way technology has come. But, man, it was a great concert. Uh, you know, I, I have so many experiences going to concerts. And, look, I know I, I, I have some, you know, videos on here where I talk about I talk about life and, and uh, I talk about Christianity and all those things. You know, there's things that happens in everybody's past that are good that they want to hang on to. Now, there's bad in your past. There's always some bad in your past that you really don't want to talk about. And uh, the only reason you would use anything bad from your past is if you're having to use it for a witness to somebody that's going through something that you can help them with. But I'm going to tell you something. I had a lot of good times. I had some bad times. I had some depressing times. But I had a lot of good times, too. And it was most of the time it was because I had good people that I was hanging out with at the time. Uh, but Cinderella, if you ever get a chance to see them, of course, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jeff Labar has passed away. He's dead and gone now. So you don't get to see the original group. 
but Tom Kiefer, if you get a chance to see him, go see him. He's definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. I've seen him several times. I'll probably talk about him again. So this has been another segment from the Steering Wheel Commentator. <laughs>